Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to Synchronicity University. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. This video is part of the moon in the astrology chart. Is looking at the moon in Libra or the seventh house. Now, the two are not exactly the same. They're not mutually exclusive. Sometimes... Uh, well, there is a natural correspondence between signs and certain houses. If you have the moon in Libra, you'll identify with some of the things that have to do with having the moon in the seventh house. However, you are going to want to watch the video specifically aimed at where the moon is in your chart based on house, in addition to where it is based on sign for a more complete picture and vice versa as well. So having the moon in Libra, if there ever was a sign that was about relationships and relating. If there ever was a placement that said, that screamed, I need to be in a relationship to be at peace, to feel happy, to feel fulfilled, to feel a sense of balance, this would be the placement. Because there is an emotional need to have that connection with at least one other person, to bounce ideas off of another person, to share um, on a one-on-one -on -one level, because of that willingness, um, it is not that common for these people to be single. They tend to be in relationships. Um, they're, again, all else being equal. If, I mean, if you've got some really tough aspects happening to your moon, you've got a moon in Libra, but it's got all kinds of tough aspects. I would say, look, on, on the surface of it, you could look at that and say, okay, wow, this person really resists being in a relationship. But I have actually found the opposite to be true. I have found that people with a Libra moon or a seventh house moon for that matter, when they have tough aspects to that moon, um, they don't necessarily resist being in a relationship. It's that they know on some level that's where they got to go. That's what they have to learn through. They're going to become in some way fulfilled or better or what they understand as emotional fulfillment and love um, tends to be characterized by the nature of those aspects. But I do think that it really does trump any kind of negative aspects or what we deem negative, but you could say tough aspects. Um, people with moon and Libra have a way of finding themselves in relationship. Now, that doesn't always mean romantic. I think it usually means romantic. Um, in addition to, or also, it could be, uh, business relationships. So these are people, because there is that real need to bounce ideas off another person, to share in a one-on-one -on -one way, um, because of that, these people are that much more likely to um, find themselves in different bonds, whether business or romantic as well. So it's about considering the other perspective, especially if you've got uh, the sign, moon and Libra. Libra is a sign, yes, it's, you know, very well captured in the symbol of the scales. Ultimately, this is about considering different perspectives and weighing options. And this is also a sign that is sort of notoriously um, hard to pin down. <laughs> and what I mean by that is not necessarily in terms of commitment, but there's a, you know, sort of stereotypical indecisiveness that comes with the Libra energy. But I think it just really has to do with considering your options, knowing that you do have options, um, and wanting to know that you've arrived at the right choice for you, depending on what it is and where you are. So if you've got Moon and Libra types, I mean, this is really a sign of people like you may not want to go shopping with them unless you also have the type of Moon that's, uh, that works well with this energy. And what I mean by that is, I mean, these are people who, when they go shopping, it isn't just, okay, I need a new short, I need a new uh, shorts, or I need a new shirt. Um, and so let me grab something that's pink. This is gonna be, they're gonna go in, they're gonna take their time. They wanna look at the different options that they have. They wanna consider the pros and cons. They're gonna think about what they have already. So for them, it tends to become this, almost like a meditative experience. <laughs> Um, anywhere where they get to consider their options, to go at their own pace, look at different um, options that they might have, different opportunities that they might have, different possibilities that might be there, even different perspectives, different opinions. All of this is going to work really well for them 
in the process of ultimately ending up at the right decisions and the right choices for them. If you are um, a person with the moon in Libra or you are with someone with a moon in Libra, moon and air needs to talk it out. So just know that, that this is going to be a person who's go going to want to talk about everything, who's going to want to talk about their emotions, their feelings, and when you did this, I felt this, and when I, you did that, I was thinking that, and I thought you were going to do this. I mean, this is literally what you can expect with a moon in Libra type, um, that they want to have that sense of understanding and they need to find the words to express what might really be hard to express because it's about feelings and emotions. Um, in general, you don't think of like feelings working really well with mind. They tend to, you te we tend to put emotion here and sort of intellect on another level, but these people have to find a way to bring those energies together. Now, what's also really interesting about Moon in Libra types is they want to be fair. And that's really one of their assets. They want to be fair. They want to be balanced. They want to have a balanced perspective. They want to find a way to um, show you and also for them, their own selves to acknowledge and respect that they see the different, whether it's feelings, different perspectives, the differences. They want to let you know that they're acknowledging all these different perspectives and all these different um, ways of viewing a thing that might be there. Um, sometimes they do that in a way, again, depending on how that moon is aspected, they do that in a way that truly is gentle and graceful. This is a sign ruled by Venus after all. But sometimes they can do that in a way that maybe is not as gentle, is not as, as graceful. And they don't mean to seem like they're coming off being judgmental, but that can sometimes be the case. That's very much that air energy that sometimes can do that. And um, they need to talk as part of sorting out their feelings. Sometimes it's not just about you understanding them, but it's about them understanding what they feel themselves. And as it is with moon and air signs, they have a lot to say. There's a lot that they have to say. And so when they do get those chances to say it, they just can really, really talk a lot as part of figuring out, usually for themselves, where their answers are. Um, but they do certainly benefit from other perspectives as well, from other people as well. So those one-on-one -on -one conversations, interactions tend to suit them quite well. Um, for people who have moon in the seventh house, um, I do think that a lot of the same themes tend to come about, that they, they like having other people around, they like bouncing ideas off of other people, uh, they find comfort in relationships. Now, you know, I said in the introductory video, I've, I think I've been saying this in all the videos for the moon signs, um, you can't look at life purpose because this is one of the top three questions I'm asked, whether I'm doing personalized horoscopes or client readings or whatever. I'm asked um, about love, I'm asked about money and career, and I'm asked about life purpose. Those are easily in the top three. And when somebody asks me about life purpose, you cannot look at life purpose without considering the moon because the moon is where you feel comfortable. It's where you find emotional fulfillment. And when you have that place of comfort, knowing that you have what it is that you need emotionally, that you're cared for, then so much more becomes possible in the world. And so whatever it is that, wherever it is that you find your life purpose, it must include uh, tapping into that moon and making connections with that moon or else it's just not gonna resonate. So the moon also has to do with what resonates. So with people who have the moon in the seventh house, they've got to figure out a way to get along with others. They want that one-on-one -on -one contact. And it is by having those one-on-one -on -one alliances that they're able to do so much more. So they need that. Now, whether it's a cheerleader in their corner, there's support there, uh, someone who's an equal that they're bouncing ideas off of. I mean, when I think of uh, moon and seventh house types of people, I mean, these are people who would, um, you know, say, 
if they were to be in any kind of industry, they would have somebody who's like a manager, who's on their side, who's encouraging them, who's telling them that they're great or they're doing really well or, hey, maybe you could do this or that. And they find a sense of comfort and ability to do that much more because they have that sense of emotional security that one other person provides them. It can be romantic. It need not necessarily be romantic. But these are people who are going to want to align themselves with other people professionally and personally. And if they can, utilize them both together. So align themselves with someone that they can um, have a bond with that is professional and personal at the same time. So they can have that sense of connection. With moon in uh, seventh house types, also keep in mind that there is a sort of a natural inclination here. And again, all else being equal, even if you've got the moon in Aries, as I've seen people with moon in Aries in the seventh house, those might seem to be very like opposite energies, but that tends to be people who are able to uh, relate to others on a one-on-one -on -one level and feel very passionately about those particular bonds that they make. And they tend to form some of their most important bonds early and they hold on to them really tightly. So the sign of the moon will tell you a lot about the nature of how that seventh house moon is being realized, how the nature of those bonds, the nature of the connections, what types of people they're likely to attract in their life or they're likely to seek attachments with. But overall, this is definitely the part of the sky that has to do with seeing yourself as reflected in the eyes of another. There's a real emotional need to do that. And by knowing that they have that support, that understanding from at least one other person, they're able to go out into the world and do that much more. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please keep your interactions coming. I absolutely love it. Facebook, Twitter, Google, plus my website, NadiaShaw.com, and the YouTube comments as well. Uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I absolutely am so grateful for this moment with you. Until we connect again, take care. Thank you for watching this lesson as part of Synchronicity University. You can go online at synchronicityuniversity.com or click on your screen if you're on YouTube right now to access even more video lessons, to access horoscopes, interviews with some of the most amazing astrologers in the world, and so much more.